can you hear me? Yes, this one is working. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I think we're supposed to start. So, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're here to uh, speak about uh, energy transition uh, and, more importantly, in Chile. Uh, and we are going to have a a uh, little round table involving four wonderful people that will uh, share their expertise uh, uh, about uh, global energy uh, transition and again more specifically in um, in Chile. So we'll be listening to Catalina Leoni who is a director export finance uh, Americas at Societe Generale. Um, Christian Sagal, I hope I'm pronouncing uh, the names well. <laughs> um, who's investment commissioner of France at Invest Chile. Uh, Robin Hervé, who's a, re a representative in Chile of CEA Liten. And uh, we'll be, be finishing with a little intervention by um, Cynthia Corotto, who is responsible for Agua at Micro. So, uh, just a short word for an introduction, and then uh, uh, we'll be asking a few questions to uh, those wonderful ladies and gentlemen. Um, as uh, the effects of climate change became and become more apparent, uh, Chile could offer policymakers uh, around the world a playbook for transitioning towards uh, renewable energy. The country in recent years has accelerated its uh, energy transition through broad-based political support, private-public partnerships, and innovative uh, green technologies. It has uh, an ambition, uh, uh, an ambitious goal, sorry, of converting 70% of its total energy uh, uh, consumption to renewables by 2030, uh, and pledged uh, to become carbon neutral by 2050, as uh, we have also aimed at in France. So, maybe a few questions uh, first uh, to Christian uh, here. Uh, how would you describe Chile's potential in renewable energies? And how does the country position itself compared to its neighbors in South America? Uh, perfect. Well, uh, merci pour l... ah, c'est bon. Oui, oui. oui D'accord. Merci pour l'invitation. D'abord, euh, je vais mélanger entre l'anglais et, et, et les français. Et, um, well, Chile has a uh, it has a race uh, to get to net zero. That's a trend that we have right now. Okay, sorry. It's a trend that we have right now you can see all the countries talking about going to net zero, right? A uh, few years ago, the Chile matrix, the, the energy matrix was only based on water and gas. We committed the mistake to go to try to depend only on gas. And we had some issues with the Argentinian gas, nothing against them, of course. Um, and we said, okay, we have one of the uh, largest potentials to transform um, solar power into energy, but also one of the highest uh, wind powers in the south. So we said, okay, why don't we try to diversify our uh, energy matrix and to try to uh, develop these uh, new goals? After that, we had these uh, treatments, uh, the Paris treatment of going uh, carbon uh, neutral by 2050. So we said, okay, uh, we are a switch, uh, change in our um, energy matrix from uh, coal powered plant fired to uh, non conventional renewable energy. So we have one of the largest potentials in Chile. Uh, we have created a roadmap by in 2020 to go and do the double click uh, with the green hydrogen. That's our main goal to become one of the leader countries in South America. And how we compare to the other countries, we are the small nation, uh, we are the, a small player in the world, but uh, we started before the others, and time to market is a key part of the business. So we are putting into place uh, help subsidies from the Chilean state. We have put, a, we allocated $50 million to develop the industry of uh, electrolyzers. Plus, uh, we are uh, setting next year uh, tenders for uh, $1 billion to develop projects in Chile. So this is a key part. Of course, you, when you think about Latin America, you see Brazil. Brazil is a big player, and they're also developing green hydrogen and um, based on uh, non-renewable um, energies. But Chile has come to a point where you can say, 
we are not ready still to provide the world in a massive way, but we are ahead of the other countries. So uh, that's a, a bit a bit of the invitation countries. Thank you. Thanks, so, thanks uh, Christian. Um, I think we're um, going to uh, have a question for Robin here. Um, we, we've seen um, uh, many, uh, many uh, uh, new articles about uh, critical resources and uh, rare metals. Uh, we, we heard about uh, how you, you build batteries, for example, in which uh, uh, those metals are key. How do you see, how do you see the role of uh, Chile uh, around those critical resources? Thank you, Edouard. So I have a slide that I think can help me answer uh, this question. So this, this was released uh, very recently uh, by uh, the US Geological Service. Sorry, Cynthia. <laughs> um, and, and the London Metal uh, Exchange. So you can see that uh, uh, when it comes to critical minerals, uh, so in this study, they studied the main ones, uh, lithium, copper, cobalt, and nickel. And Chile has the biggest uh, reserves on Earth uh, in, in monetary value when it comes to those minerals mainly thanks to uh, uh, copper and lithium. So Chile is really a, a very, very big player, a, a heavy weight when it comes to uh, uh, Chile, uh, uh, lithium and copper. And it's not only a potential, it's, it's a potential that is already very well exploited. Chile is the, the world's largest producer of copper and the second world's largest producer of, of lithium. And I think there are two main goals in the Chilean strategy because you know that as uh, we need to decarbonize our industry, we will need to electrify almost everything, almost everything. Uh, and uh, for that, we will need a lot of copper and a, a lot of lithium. It's, it's really exponential. The demand will, will increase exponentially in the next few decades. Uh, and so Chile uh, has, I would say, two main goals. The first one is to maintain the market share of uh, lithium and copper exportation. And to maintain its market share, Chile will have to increase the production uh, uh, fastly uh, because competitors are growing, Argentina and, and, and Australia, for example, when it comes to lithium. Uh, and the second goal is to uh, have a sustainable extraction of those metals. Uh, to sum up, I would say that for, for copper, which is a rock mining industry, it's very traditional mining, I would say, uh, you need a lot of energy and you need more and more energy because Chile has been exploiting copper for more than a hundred years now. So there, the rocks uh, are less concentrated in copper. You have to go deeper into the ground and you have more and more complex minerals to process. So you, you have to spend more and more energy and today that energy is based on fossil fuels. So the main goal for copper is to decarbonize it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Chile has the, the concentration of mines in Chile is, is mainly in the Atacama Desert where, where you have maybe the most competitive sun uh, in the world so today the, the, the bet of Chile is to decarbonize that industry through mainly through solar power and solar fuels and also wind uh, and when it comes to lithium it's a very different kind of industry at least in Chile and, and, and in Argentina and Bolivia and the, the lithium triangle uh, it's it's uh, uh, brines that are underground, so uh, salty water, very concentrated in, in lithium, that you pump uh, onto the ground and you let evaporate because you have you are also in Atacama Desert, and you have sun uh, uh, to evaporate it, to concentrate your brines, your salty water, uh, and and to produce the lithium. And Chile today is able, uh, thanks to Atacama Sala, which is a geological miracle. Chile uh, is producing the cheapest lithium on earth and also the, the lithium that has the lowest carbon footprint, which is very important for battery manufacturers. The main problem is that with the, the, the current technique, uh, you lose a lot of water uh, of the ecosystem because you evaporate water. So today Chile is uh, investing a lot uh, in, in research and, and also uh, industrially on direct lithium extraction technologies that helps you uh, uh, capture the lithium from the brine and re-inject the brine into the salar in order not to, to lose uh, uh, water, so the, the, the water footprint. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Robin. Uh, turning uh, to Catalina, uh, can you uh, explain to us if uh, there is an appetite uh, in the banking sector for financing uh, uh, such investments and more importantly in the renewable energy sector? Yeah, sure. And if you can just help me, Edward, just pass on the slide. Yeah, that's it. So, um, if there are among you uh, individuals or companies that have uh, that want to develop um, projects, sustainable projects in Chile, and want to raise the hand and ask, can Societe Generale or a bank like Societe Generale finance those projects? Well, yes, please uh, do <laughs> send applications to us. However, what it's important to know is that not all of the projects are financeable by commercial banks or bankable let's let's call it like this so my purpose today is to to give you some keys on what are the criteria that banks are looking at when analyzing uh, when assessing um, a project that is being uh, brought to us for for financing the first one the most important of course we will look who is the borrower is it a well-established company? Is it uh, probably a special purpose vehicle that is put in place just for the needs of the project? We will also be looking at who are your partners, who are your sponsors, who is supporting the project, and also to all the parties involved in the, in, in the project, uh, in the whole supply chain, who are your suppliers, who are your end users, and who are the off-takers, the buyers of the product that you are wanting to, that the project is willing to develop. Of course, another uh, point important for a bank is to look who else is financing the projects. We like risk sharing, it's normal. It's, we are basically talking about new um, and less mature technologies or developments. So we like to see that other banks, other uh, multilaterals uh, or development banks or even governments are also supporting your project. So this is a big boost when assessing a project by, by, by commercial bank like Societe Generale. Of course, what we don't like to see is two complicated, complex structures that are not justified, and this uh, can put a stop to the project because we would necessarily have onboarding and KYC um, blockage. The next criteria that we will be looking at as a bank is who is paying, who is repaying the debt that I put on the table? How are the cash flows generated? Who, how are the revenues? How strong are the cash flow projection? And in case you identify a gap or a shortfall in those, cash, in those cash flows, what is the security package that will, that will uh, fill in the gap? Um, corporate guarantees, uh, insurances, um, governments, multilaterals can help um, in covering up this, the, the, those shortfalls. Of course, what we don't like to see is a very fragile and um, uh, risky um, balance in terms of risk allocations between the different parties involved on the project. Um, another important aspect for a bank is contractual and regulatory framework. We are talking here about Chile. Um, it is basically one of the most uh, developed country in the region when it comes to, to regulatory framework and contractual one. But still, we're talking about energy transition. There are a lot of uh, fields and uh, that are in, uh, encompassed here. If we're talking about wind and solar, yes, contractual framework is very strong and it's a plus for a bank. If we're talking about hydrogen, for instance, well, there may be, um, as it's less mature, we will be uh, looking more thoroughly in, in what is the regulatory and the contractual framework. We will be requesting you to, 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 to justify and to, to show off what are, I mean, what is the destination of the, of the product that the project is developing, what are your offtake agreements, with which companies, is it maybe a PPP, a public-private uh, partnership, is it a government-backed payment scheme? All this contractual um, framework is important for a bank when assessing a transaction. Um, another important aspect is, of course, features that are really specific to the project. And I would like to make a, just a highlight here on environment and social topics, because we are talking about uh, renewable energies and energy transition. And even if ultimately the, the outcome is obviously positive 
for in terms of uh, ENS um, matters. This d does not mean that we will not be looking at during the development of the project, what are could the project affect in a negative way um, the, the the area or the population around? Of course, there are a multitude of of potential scenarios. So um, we, we will be looking at this also, and what we don't, <laughs> what we have to to deal with, uh, and it's a reality for for Chile. Maybe Christian can 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 confirm this. Uh, we will also. I mean, the reality is that for Chile, that the permitting process is a rather long process. Um, so this is also an aspect that is taken into account by, by, by a bank. So just to summarize and to give you some, some, some hints, if you, have a, a, if you want to develop a project in the renewable energy or energy transition in Chile, partner up with strong counterparts, with uh, reliable ones. Um, Build up a solid cash flow projection and think about securities to fill in the gap, if any. Um, bring to the bank in, with your application uh, all the information about regulatory and contractual framework. And please flag to us all potential uh, ENS topics or new technologies, untested technologies that are specifically related to the project. And uh, we would be happy to, to assess the feasibility of your project. Thank you very much, uh, Catalina. Um, going back to, to Christian, uh, as an investment commissioner, how do you, you must, you must obviously be um, in contact with many French firms that have interest in uh, working uh, in Chile with Chile. Uh, what's your assessment of, um, of uh, uh, the relationships between French companies and uh, over the overall uh, Chilean uh, uh, ecosystem? Well, uh, first of all, I, I'm, I'm very happy to be here in, in Paris. It's, it's an amazing place to be. Um, the relationship that we have with France, Chile and France, it's, it's from a long time ago. Uh, we started with the Constitution. We have had a lot of French uh, uh, people doing changes in our society. So it, we have a long relationship. The cultures are different, but not that different. It's a long flight to get there. Yes, it's a long flight. It takes 14 to 15 hours. So it's not so easy to say, okay, I'm going to go there and prospect the market. But actually, what you can see in the Chilean market is that all the big companies from France are already there. NG, EDF, Total, those are already working with big projects. We have uh, mapped the whole um, projects that we have in green hydrogen, which is one of the, the highest industry or the, the big industry that we have in, in Chile right now. And you can see here, I, well, it's kind of far for you, but uh, we have detected more than 40 projects. From those 40 projects, 20 projects are already in some kind of development. From those 20 projects, five, I mean, seven projects are from French companies or French companies are in some degree involved uh, to, to develop the green hydrogen strategy. From those seven projects, one is already in place, which is a plant that is producing green hydrogen for, uh, between Angers uh, and Walmart. Uh, but also, we have one of the biggest projects that is going to be taking place in Magallanes, the, the south of Chile, uh, and Total Eren is uh, behind that. So, what we have found, uh, we, we, what we have found between the uh, among the, the French companies that they have an interest to be there. They, they are they really like Chile and how we can develop projects. There is still uh, a space. All the big companies are already there, but. Also, there is a space for the companies that provide services to those companies, the small, the medium companies, to go there, to develop the technology, to produce electrolyzers, uh, to know how we can uh, produce green hydrogen. Now, uh, in, uh, regarding the constraints, um, yes, Catalina mentioned it, the permits, uh, they are taking long. But why? Because we take care of the communities, we take care of on, how to be um, environmental, um, environmental uh, we, we need to take care of the environment, and that's why sometimes it takes so long. But this year, the government is presenting a new project of law on how to reduce the timing on, uh, on the permits. And, and also, we as Invest Chile, we take care that if you have a GAN chart and you are going to be developing a project, and you said, okay, this year uh, I'm going to handle or manage uh, three, four permits, we're going to be behind that and making sure that 
the, the, this is complying with what you have. So the invitation is that you can have projects in Chile. Even though it's far away, it's a friendly country, we, uh, we take care of our, our foreign investors because we know we depend a lot on the foreign investors. So uh, that's pretty much what I have to tell you about the relation between France and Chile. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. And bouncing on uh, the investor relationship, maybe Catalina, you can explain to us uh, what financial products are available at there to, to finance the, the renewable um, energy projects and uh, also maybe give us an example. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, just before talking about uh, how do banks intervene, maybe it's worth mentioning um, that before the actual financing by, by an international bank, there is a very important phase of pre-feasibility and feasibility stage. And at this point, companies, uh, and notably small and medium companies, for Chile, they are relatively well helped and accompanied. Uh, there are uh, a lot of instruments, and I would only, only want to mention here two. One uh, given by the, by the, the French government, the FASEP, the, the Fonds d'études et d'aide au secteur public, privé, pardon, privé, uh, that it's a kind of subsidy. Uh, it's a grant that is, that is offered by, by, the, by the French government to sm notably small and medium enterprises that have pro development projects in, in Chile. Uh, another one, important one is on the Chilean side, it, and it's, it comes from uh, CORFO, C-O-R-F-O, which is a kind of, it's the corresponding grant, but uh, given by, by the Chilean government. On top of these, let's say, institutional um, sovereign uh, grants, there are a lot of players in the market that intervene in this pre-feasibility and feasibility stage. And those can be multilaterals, can be equity funds, can be infrastructure funds, investment funds that are willing to invest in, in this phase. Banks come into, let's say, a second, a second phase when the project is mature enough. And um, yeah, on this slide you could uh, you can see this is this slide is supposed to show you just a few examples of how can um, commercial banks, Société Générale, because I work there, <laughs> um, uh, can can help can accompany a project. And because we usually think that banks give uh, financings, which is true, but before this, uh, you must keep in mind that we we can also offer a whole. A range of other services like advisory for financial for advisory for 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 the development of uh, of your project. Um, also, we can help you on the capital markets uh, introduction of the project if it is the case. Uh, and because the theme of of this whole event is fierté. Uh, I am proud today that <laughs> that I can say that Societe Generale was the, the, the leader in um, in playing the, the first, I mean, the, in, or, in, in arranging the first sovereign green and sustainably linked bond issued by the Republic of Chile. Um, there, were, there were two of those in 2019 and 2020, and each of them led by Societe Generale. The core of our activity will remain, of course, commercial debt. So we have a multitude of, um, of instruments and, and, and products that we, can, uh, that we can put in place. We're talking about energy transition. We can think of, uh, you know, copper projects, hydrogen, desalination plants. And more personally, uh, I, can, I can give a testimony for those who are interested in, in uh, electric mobility. So uh, Société Générale finance more almost 2,000 electric buses for the public transportation system of Santiago Red. Um, we can also, and this is my, I mean, this is the activity of, of, of the team I work within, uh, project, uh, let's say project or assimilated to project finance. Um, credits are covered by export credit agencies and in this field uh, the most active industries have been mining and, and energy if we think about uh, about uh, Chile and also equity and um, I think there have been a lot of uh, developments and the association is very involved in, in structuring the creation of um, equity funds related to the, the development of hydrogen products in, in, in Chile. 
So this is a bit the panorama of, of um, instruments and uh, that, that a bank like Societe Generale can offer. But please keep in mind that before coming to Societe Generale, to a bank, you have also um, available a multitude of other uh, types of support, uh, government or private, in order to to make your project uh, more mature. Thank you very much, uh, Catanina, for those um, explanations. Turning to Robin, who is uh, waiting his turn. Um, uh, Robin, let's dig into to one of the main uh, uh, energy vectors that we've been hearing about uh, in order to uh, uh, foster the energy transition. We're talking about hydrogen. Um, and maybe, can you, can you tell us more of, about the potential of hydrogen in Chile? Yeah, thank, thank you, Edouard. So yeah, the, this uh, slide uh, I like because it, it's not so recent. Uh, it was released by the International Energy Agency four years ago. But you can see that so this is a world map of the hydrogen uh, production cost from hybrid solar and wind uh, power plants. Uh, and so you can see in red the, the, the lowest uh, prices, the cheapest uh, hydrogen. And you can see that uh, in Chile, you ha we have two big poles. Uh, so in the north, uh, the Atacama Desert, with maybe a, a unique uh, sun uh, radiation conditions, uh, maybe the most competitive on Earth, also wind power. And in the south, uh, in Patagonia, uh, you have maybe the, the most competitive winds uh, in the world. And so th this is a big potential for Chile. And it, it, it's not exploited today, it's, it's a potential. And to unlock that potential, uh, as Christian said, Chile needs to accelerate the permitting for the, the hydrogen production and export project uh, in, in, uh, in Chile. And to give you just an idea of, of the, what is at stake for Chile, uh, the, the investment uh, of French companies in Chile uh, generally doesn't pass $1 billion, just to give you an idea. And today, you have companies like Total RN that are announcing investments of $20 billion. So it's, it's a factor of 20, 20 times more. So this is, this is a game changer in, in the relationship between Chile and France in, in terms of investments. Um, and uh, uh, re regarding the Chilean strategy to get there, uh, of course, there is permitting, but there is also the necessity, the need to uh, grow the domestic market of hydrogen before scaling up to exports. Because those big projects, uh, $20 billion, uh, it means gigawatts of, of power plants, electrolyzers, it cannot be, be built in a day. Uh, it will be for 10, 15 years from now. Uh, so now you need to, for now you need to, uh, to build pilot projects, uh, small scale projects, and those small scale projects who have financial viability, they need off-takers, local off-takers. Uh, it means uh, Chilean industry that will be able to buy that, that green hydrogen. And uh, thus you will create local value, you will create a local ecosystem that will reinforce your export strategy. So that's one of the main focus of the Chilean hydrogen uh, strategy. And also, uh, I think, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, export, of course, it's a long term, but you need to secure the import contract now. Uh, so Chile is working on that also. Uh, it has secured uh, contracts with uh, uh, European ports for the imports of, of green hydrogen or green molecules, sorry, are hydrogen and derivatives. Um, and, and also there is an agreement between the uh, European Union and Chile that has uh, a, a clause on, on uh, uh, hydrogen export and, and to, to have the Chilean hydrogen freely uh, 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 to, 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 to be free across the, the European borders and this agreement should be signed uh, anytime soon. So th those are the main uh, goals for, for Chile. Thank you, uh, Robin. So, so we all understand that Chile is not only a beautiful country with great landscapes, but also a land of opportunity for business and more importantly, uh, in renewables. Maybe we should hear uh, Cynthia, who can explain to us uh, how it is to, to, to actually make business in Chile. Okay. Ouais. Vous êtes dans les biens? Okay. 
Uh, okay, I prepared my little presentation in French, it's okay, but uh, I will try to talk in English like everybody. <laughs> so maybe I will mix a, a little of, also. Um, well, I work at the, I've been working in Micro, it's a it's an company, French and a Chilean company. Uh, I'm from Latin America, but I work in the, um, in the French office. A micro in Chile. It was born in 2005. Uh, his director, his director was uh, called to um, to do um, to construct to build uh, their uh, two big gasometer gasometer in Santiago de Chile. They started in, in, in so the company started uh, in this time. But uh, in 2007, um, they decide to to um, to do the, the first company uh, like Aquatira, the name is Aquatira. After it was sold uh, and in 2012, it was uh, born uh, Micro. Uh, that they come Micro really in 2014, but they start in 2012, and start in they started to work in the. Um, in the water treatment, because uh, Chile is a country, is one of the country in Latin America that uh, they are very interested in the environmental. Um, they work; they are the more um, developed in the water treatment and the wastewater treatment. Also, I think it's the, the most in, the, in to all Latin America. Um, so they have a big problem also with the arsenic there in the in groundwater, like other countries like uh, Argentina, Mexico, and the others in in the continent. Um, it's for that that the micro start to work there in this subject. And until today, they work in this in the water treatment. They work it in the. In the um, Gasometers construction the bio, with the biogas. Also now today it's working in the hydrogen vert, <laughs> green hydrogen, and they started also to work in the in the lithium. Uh, more in the lithium, not not a lot in the technology part, sino more in the in the, the logistic, in the technical part with the. Uh, the other company present in Chile. And today they have the business also not only in Chile, uh, it's also in Argentina, in Colombia, they start to work also in Panama. Um, in Argentina they work also with the, with the gasometers construction and today they are working in the water treatment. Uh, the same for uh, Panama, and they start to work uh, today in Colombia with the same subject. And um, what? Well, just a little about the micro. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have just about um, finished our, the round table. Do you guys have any questions uh, for the wonderful participants here? Well, not even one question from the back. Yep. I will. I am from Colombia, and I would like to know more, like in the in the green transition that is living now in Latin America. Which are the incentives that the government of Chile, for example, is giving to the enterprise to invest in this sector and, yeah, like legal incentives or, or how you are promoting the investment in that specific field? Uh, yeah, I can go uh, to, to try to reply to your question so over that. Uh, well, Chile is uh, characterized to be a country that doesn't give a lot of uh, subsidies. It's more a uh, price-driven dri market. Uh, it means that if you have the market, you will install in our country just because you are going to be profitable. Uh, 
Uh, that being said, um, we have one of the, in terms of the green hydrogen, why the green hydrogen in Chile is so uh, attractive. Because when you produce green hydrogen, around 40 to 65% of the cost is electricity. And in Chile it would be very low because you already have the installed capacity over there. Now, to develop the green industry, you need a lot of support from the governments. This is a worldwide issue. If we, not, we don't put the right incentives to start changing our uh, energy matrix, this is not going to happen. So what we started was with uh, these 50 million allocations to develop uh, new technologies on uh, electrolyzers that are going to be running by 2025. Those are five gigawatts that are going to be placed in Chile. But also, next year, we, we have support from different banks and uh, institutions, international institutions, and we are going to be allocating $1 billion uh, for new projects. So we want to boost this, this, uh, this industry. And moreover, uh, Chile offers that we have implemented a roadmap in 2020, the 2020. And now we are working over the uh, action plan. How are we going to be boosting? How are we going to be, be making the change in the industry? How we can start uh, uh, the pilot with the taxis, with the buses, with the mining industry, and so on. So first, uh, Chile is a market driven, um, price driven market, uh, and then we are putting some efforts uh, to put subsidies for the um, um, foreign companies or local companies to develop the industry. Maybe just to, to complement, uh, the Corfo, so the, the uh, Chilean Innovation uh, Agency, uh, has subsidies, for example, uh, 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 last year or, uh, they, they uh, secured $50 million for, uh, to finance uh, electrolyzer capex for pilot projects. And CEA Litten is involved in, in, in some of those projects and, and also, of course, French companies are, are involved. Uh, so there, there are subsidies, not much, but uh, uh, there are also new subsidies, in general, uh, not more than $50 million. Uh, uh, but recently, uh, the Chilean government also secured uh, $1 billion of credits uh, for the investment in green hydrogen uh, projects in Chile. And uh, Catalina knows more, uh, I think, but basically uh, the Chilean government uh, take, uh, share the risk with, with the bank to enable the investment. Because we know, we know that uh, green hydrogen projects are a more, more risky project in terms of technology uncertainty and, and te technological and financial uncertainty. So the, the government knows that and to accelerate investment, uh, the, uh, the Chilean government through Corfo also uh, uh, gives guarantees uh, to, the, to the investors. Uh, and so the, they, they, they secured $1 billion of, in, of investment uh, for, for the next uh, few decade. And if I, if I may add a word, it depends on the sector that you are focusing on, but what I can add is that, for instance, on green mobility in Santiago de Chile for the public transportation, uh, basically electric buses, um, the, the government put in place a kind of subsidy that is uh, part of the budget, of the, of the, of the state's budget, uh, and that it w with basically sets up for to cover any gap in revenues in public transportation. As you can imagine, this is very uh, variable and, and floating, and we had some crisis with COVID and, and, and other ones where, where public transports were not used as they were planned to. So in this case, it is the government through the budget that fills in this gap and helps the operator to um, you know, to, to, to reach the level, the level of revenues that, that it expected and it had been tested. And this has a direct implication on financing because this kind of support from the government makes uh, a project very bankable because we, we can assimilate it to, to almost a sovereign, a sovereign risk and not operator or, or private uh, company risk. Thank you. Um, any other question? Well, uh, thank you very much to uh, everyone for participating to this roundtable. Have a good day, too.